Yo, what's up everyone? This video, we're gonna be talking about some of the best practices when it comes to instance properties and prototype properties. So in the previous video, we talked about how you can overwrite a prototype property by setting that same property directly on the object. In this situation, the student inherits from the user and the user has active true, but we overrode that by setting a student.active to false. In the object structure, you can see that directly right here. And then on the prototype, you can see active true here. When looking for this property to see what the value is, it'll first look at the object. And if it doesn't exist, it'll look at the prototype. But since it doesn't exist, we'll get the value false. So now I wanna talk about when you should use properties on the prototype and when you should put them directly on the object. But before we get into all those details, you gotta check out our sponsor, DevMountain. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So the main reason you would want to create a prototype object is when you have multiple objects that are similar in nature, but might have some minor differences between them. So for example, students are very similar to teachers, but they're not the same exact thing. You know, students and teachers, they're both humanoids. They both might have a name. They both might have a birth date, a place of living. They both might be active or inactive, such as here, the default is active true, but there are some key differences. For example, a student will have a major if we're talking about some kind of school system or if we're talking about an online learning platform, the student might have a particular track they're following or something like that. Teachers, on the other hand, teach. They have classes they're teaching. So the things that are shared between the student and the teacher can go on the prototype, in this case, user. That's because when we set these prototypes, they're both going to have that value, such as active. So one thing that's weird about the way we have it set up right now is that both the teacher and the student have active true. Right now we're just working with single object literals, but once we get into constructors and creating lots of objects, it doesn't really make sense just to make everybody active true. When something is likely to change between object to object, it would make more sense to have that directly inside of the object. So basically you could take this active true and you could put it inside of the student and you could put it inside of the teacher and put the appropriate value. So if that's the case, if you can do it that way, why exactly did we do the prototype and put it in this own object over here? Well, what I was thinking is that if the majority of objects have active true, you can have it as the default. Or if you want it to default to false, you could set this to false and then only set it to true on the exceptions. So for example, let's say the student activates their email address. We can say student.active is true. So everyone is false unless otherwise stated directly in the object at this level, not in the prototype. So doing a refresh, you can see it's true when we get student.active. I'm gonna switch this tacos back to active. There we go. So what we could do is we could add more to the prototype object. For example, we could create a method. We will call it say hello, and this will be a function. What we will do is we will just return this dot name plus says hi. Where does this dot name come from? Well, that's something we would put directly on the objects. So we can give the teacher a name down here. We'll say name, we'll make it Caleb Curry because I'm teaching. And then we'll give you an appropriate name as well. Name, oh, I don't know. Peasant student maybe, perfect. What we can do is we can say teacher dot say hello, call that method, and we'll do the same for the student. There we go, do a refresh, and look at that. Caleb Curry says hi, peasant student says hi, and I need to throw a space in there. So when this method is invoked on the teacher, the very first place it looks for the value of name is directly on that object, which is where it gets it. And then if it's not found there, it's going to look on the prototype and then if it's not there, it'll look at the next prototype and so forth until it's undefined once we run out of prototypes. We put say hello inside of the user because you can think of it as core functionality 
for the objects that are going to inherit from it. It doesn't make sense to put the same exact function inside of both of the object literals. Any common functionality we can put inside of a prototype to keep things more organized. Then if we want to update the greeting, we can do that here. Now if you want to use a special greeting, that's something you can override in a particular object. Like we talked about how we overrid the, the active being false. So that's all I got for the basics of prototypes and inheritance. What we're going to be doing now is in the next video, we're going to talk about polymorphism, which is another big piece of object-oriented programming. And it really deals with how we can view objects as different types based on the prototype chain. So for example, we can treat a student as a student, or we can treat the student as a user. We can treat both the students and the teachers as a user. But we'll get into all the juicy details in the next one. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you then. You better subscribe.